This Sunday. This Sunday. Sunday. Side by side at the microphone, from the green light to the speed trap, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino calls them as they seize them, and you better believe them. Here, Here. relevant news, biased opinions, and outright bullshit regarding every aspect of automotive culture. Gas, but mechanical trickery never before revealed over FCC regulated airwaves. Thrilled to the explosive tension as Chris and Ray cuss each other down the track and barrel roll across the finish line, laughing at certain disaster as they shake hands with the devil. All that and much more this Sunday at high noon on the Motormouth Radio Hour. Call in and speak live with the wizards of speed and live feed, Chris Switzer and Ray Garino. Bring the whole family. Kids under 12 get in free. Every Sunday at noon on WHPC, take the Long Island Expressway to the Meadowbrook Parkway and look for the sign saying no parking on the expressway and no express service on the parkway. Go ride on Highway 24 to Garden City. $2 all-day parking includes pit pass. Sunday! School may be out forever, <laughs> but Motormouth Radio will live on forever with your hosts, Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer, here today to entertain you. And uh, what were you laughing at, Chris? How are you? I don't know. The, I don't know. Motormouth Radio, the more you listen, the more I'm amazed. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that happens. So. <laughs> we uh, let me tell you something. We have a great uh, music is personal today, folks. It's it's mm. definitely personal <laughs> on uh, on my side, but uh, we can explain yes. that later. Uh, more importantly than that, Chris, we're going to have a great show today. We're going to have one of our recurring favorite guests, our old friend Uncle Tony. Not Uncle Avunge, but Uncle Tony is going to be coming in today <laughs> from, of course, Uncle Tony's garage. You know him from YouTube and uh, yes. from other places. And uh, he's going to share some wisdom and, and share his light with us. I know, and it's I'm looking forward to this because I, I, I love watching. I mean, I haven't seen him in a while, but the ones that I did see of, of Uncle Tony's Garage, just how he takes what he has and just makes the best out of it is to me is remarkable and and i also like the fact that he doesn't mind driving cars in in primer no <laughs> he doesn't mind driving cars no door panels on him it's no doors on him you know he's an old school guy like ourselves yes. and that's why i like him i follow him i've been following him for a long time and, and mm -hmm. have a great time but uh so we're going to talk to him about some stuff and uh you know, I have a couple topics. We're gonna, we'll talk about some things that he was uh, doing video wise. What's new with you? Anything uh, happening with the with the fleet or the? Or you the know, I had I had a laugh. I went to go change the oil in my uh, Explorer, and, and and I've come to realize I don't drive as much as I used to. Yeah, but I, did, I didn't think this was going to happen. Um, I wrote down usually when I change the oil, I do like what you do, Ray. I, I write it down, but I write it down just on the box that the oil filter came in. I rip the, the, the uh, tab off it. I write down whatever the mileage is and I put it aside. And when I go to change the oil, I just take a note of what the mileage was. Okay. So I, I, I look at the mileage and it has 107,000 miles on the card. I'm looking at the card. It says 107. So that's when I was last, I last changed it, but it was back in December. Okay. Put the card back. I go to the Explorer to go check the mileage. It's 108. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I drove less than a thousand miles in almost what five months now six I, months see, i get that with my impala which just sits there and does, that'll have maybe a thousand miles a year <laughs> yeah. uh now you know something funny you mentioned that i i have a, an issue like that myself i have to june next week is june and i have to have my fiat inspected you know it's i get yeah. cars throughout the year and and i remember what i did last year i literally took that car out of the garage had it inspected, and I kind of brought it back and shoved it back in the garage. I didn't drive it for the rest of the year. That car. Oh, my god! And there's a good oh, reason. Holy. 
And there's and you say why? Why wouldn't you drive your why? sports car? Why? Why wouldn't you drive your sports car, right? <laughs> it's because I changed my daily driver. Now you say, how does that work? Well, yeah. I had the Mazda. I was driving the Mazda three, and what sure. I would typically do is drive to the, the Fiat's in a garage off site. I rent a uh, a garage next town over. So I would drive the Mazda there, pull the Fiat out, put the Mazda in that garage, and take the Fiat. I'd have it out for sometimes a month, you know, and then yeah. when weather was bad, I'd swap it. Well, now with the FJ, I don't think, I don't know, I haven't verified that it'll fit in that garage because of oh. the height. I don't know. Maybe it will, but I need another set of eyes. So because of that, and I wasn't oh. just going to leave that vehicle in, you know, someone else's space. That's just not mm-hmm. really the right thing to do, you know? Sure so, thing. Uh, so Holy anyway. moly. So that one yeah. didn't get many miles at all. Maybe get, you know, 20. I don't know. So It's funny you should mention that because my CX-9, the Mazda, will fit in the garage with about maybe about three inches between the gar- open garage door and the roof of the, of the truck, of the, of the Mazda. The Explorer is different, and it all comes down to the, uh, to the uh, uh, antenna. Oh, the radio wow. antenna. Really? Because the, the radio antenna on the Mazda is like, it looks like a little pimple that sits on the back right above the rear window. It's like a little bump that sits up there. That's the satellite. It's, little shark little shark fin? No, it's not a shark fin. Oh, it's you have just a, like, it's, okay. it's like, it looks like a zit. <laughs> got you. Yeah, I got you. It looks like a mole on yeah. the top. No hair on it, but just a little. The Explorer has got a standard antenna that sticks out the back like uh like the old Buick Roadmasters that would come up from the from the windshield this one is just shy of the uh, rear hatch just right. sits up there and that will hit the bottom of the open door open the garage door okay that'll hit that so I have to whenever I have to put the explorer in the garage I got to go get a spackle bucket put it behind the the, the truck jump up unscrew the aerial the antenna from the roof right because I, I can't reach up there so i need the i need the assistance of a spackle bucket it's perfect just boom just get up there okay pick it up and, and off and running and i'm always forever forgetting <laughs> that uh, and i'm turning on the radio i'm like why can't the radio why, why am i not right. getting the signal what i haven't forgotten is we had a flashing light so let's go to the phones and let's say hi caller you're on with the motor mouths Hi, guys. Uh, listen, I, I could be wrong, but I, I don't think you're broadcasting. Oh, no? Why is really? that? Are you, are you listening on the radio or on the stream, Bob? No, I, I, I have you on the radio, and I, I turn the radio on and off. I'm not pulling a prank. I, I, I did it two or three times on the radio. I don't think you're broadcasting. Okay. Oh boy. Well, uh, you know what? Not, Rob's not, in here with his phone, so he's working on something diligently. So we're we're he's he's on top of that. Um, I'm that, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No. I just wanted to share that with you. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah it's well. always a pleasure. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. All right, yeah, Rob is uh, working on it now, so we're going to see what's uh, what's stream, happening. The stream's still of course. working. Of course. The stream is working, yeah. though, so that's okay. I know we have I a- see, I'm looking at the levels on the stream here, because I have that in front of me, and yes, yeah. I, I see we are we are blipping when uh, when the stream is going, so I know we're doing that. Right. We are blipping when... Yes, <laughs> we're still there. Okay, well, we ha- <laughs> let's, uh, let's go back. We'll go back to the phones and say, hi, you're on with the motor mouths. Hello, Chris and Ray. Yes. What, yep. What's up, John? Happy Memorial Day to everybody. And uh, a big thank you to all those who have served and uh, fallen for our country and those who are serving today. Thank Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you, John. Thank you for bringing that up. That was, that was nice of you. It was smart of you. Yes. Yes. Got to do it's, that. You know, there, there's a lot of respect for, for those to serve. So, you're absolutely uh, right. Anyhow, Chris, I got an honor group of the day for you. <laughs> oh, right. This, as you guys were discussing getting stuff in a garage, and Ray knows uh, most of the fleet that I had over the years, about the only thing that fit well in my garage that was built in with the house in 1964 was my MGB. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there and I go, the honor group of the day should be the builders that built the houses way back when. And I, said, I, I looked at my MG in the garage and said, I wonder what a 64 Impala would be like trying to shoehorn it in here. Yeah. <laughs> is it, what is it, John? Is it too shallow? Is it too low? What's, what's up with the, your garage? Why won't the it only thing fit? that I've ever managed to keep in the garage, I had, uh, let me see, the, uh, the MGB, 
I had a, a Mustang convertible mm-hmm. um, and a Pontiac G6 convertible. But you had to put the top down and pretty much do like the Dukes of Hazard to, <laughs> to get <laughs> on the larger cars. The MG was the only one I could get the driver's door open, and that's with it pulled all the way as far to the right as I could. You know, it's so funny because you said your garage was built with the house in 1964. I had a garage that was built in 1925 back in Brooklyn that the only thing that would fit in there was a Model T. Yeah, but, probably. Uh, they were a yeah, little but, bit narrower back then. Yeah, yeah. but and, and it's like you say, that garage housed the TR6. That was the only thing that fit in there. I tried to get my 84 Corvette in the garage, and you could, I couldn't even... The fenders would hit either side of the door. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, the other thing was, too, though, Chris, I don't know if it made a difference. You did have, you know, would you have shelving unit in there and, and other stuff oh, on yeah. the sides? That makes it a little, uh, a bit of an issue. But, yeah, garages yes. were definitely not built the same back then as they are now. That's for Dawn. Yeah, that's gotcha. voice. It's perfect. With voice, forget about it. Right. right. <laughs> you know, I, I almost built myself out of my garage, and I'll tell you how. I had my I had, had my Pontiac in the garage many times over the years, and it fit. And then uh, I had it in the storage garage. And then it went into the restoration process. So it wasn't at my house for a, for a while. And in the meantime, I built a shelf unit in the, on the back wall of my garage where I could put my snow tires and I, I have engines underneath that and, you know, to, to maximize some space. And when I brought the Pontiac back, I never thought, never took that into consideration. And now that car fits between that, that shelf unit and the garage door. When I close it, I can't get around it in the front oh. or the back with the door closed. I mean, it's that close. It's by a matter of like two inches. Oh, yes, my gosh. I, I've got like 30 feet of depth in the garage, which is great. And I have, you know, like you did, shelving units on the, the, the back wall. But right. I was still able to get my convertibles in the garage and put the snowblower behind it yeah. <laughs> for winter action. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I have the snowblower on one side of the garage and the Chrysler 300 on the other side. They both can't occupy the same side of the garage. It won't work. No. It won't work. The Chrysler's too long. I'll have the back of it sticking out in no time with the, with the snowblower on the same side. Right. So they have to occupy different sides of the of the two-car garage I have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, and Ray being from the engineer physics department can tell you that old saying of two objects can't occupy the same space at the same time. <laughs> yes. Or, 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 or they can, but it gets real ugly. That was like yeah. a codicil. <laughs> and insurance companies get involved. <laughs> More lawyers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very true. Sure. <laughs> All right, John, thanks for that info. Guys, have a safe Memorial Day and uh, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. We got some great weather today. Thanks, John. Talk to you soon. John, a a pleasure. Thanks so much. All right. right. You know, uh, it seems like we are having some trouble with the audio signal today, but you can listen on the stream. We're on nccradio.org iHeartRadio, TuneIn, and Odyssey, and also on MotormouthRadio.com. If you scroll down a little bit, there's a Listen Live tab where you can you can uh, check. So our friends who listen uh, who listen that way have been reporting in. What do you got, Rob? Uh, I just heard uh, there's a, might be an outage at the tower. Ah, uh, the, it, it's, we'll find out in ten minutes if we're back on the air. Okay. And, but the stream is going. The stream is going. So, so unlike the Flowmax commercials, the stream is, yeah. is fine. <laughs> but it, Thank you, Rob. But it's the tower. The tower. <laughs> ah, Rapunzel, the tower. <laughs> Rapunzel. <laughs> All right. Well, so, hopefully in 10 minutes. Thank you, Rob. Thank all you, Rob. Right. Checking in and getting all that cool information. That's that's good to know. Hey, you know, uh, uh, a good friend, another friend of ours, uh, I want to throw a shout out to uh, Chassie John. I don't know if he, he probably can't hear us today. He's laid up. He's out of service right now. He's having some uh, some bad luck with his with his back. So we hope that he uh, he can recover real fast and, and get the help he needs and, and get back to work, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, oh. Chassis John's getting his chassis worked on. Exactly. Nice. And Jeep and Al, now he went on a road trip last week down to Florida. He took his Ram truck and his big travel trailer, and he towed it down. And he had some trouble, like, with his exhaust. He's fixing things on the fly as he goes. Um, you know, and he's going to stop at, I know, what, Bucky, Buck, Buck, B-U-C-C-E-S. I don't know how you say that. I guess it was, I would say Bucky's. Yeah. Um, he I was going to say, be careful when you do say that. <laughs> yeah, it's probably it's one of the best truck stops I think for uh, pulled pork sandwiches I've heard in the uh, mm-hmm. in the place. So Al's on the road; he's listening to us on the stream, so we know that's working well. Yes, 
all that cool stuff. <laughs> right. You could listen when you're uh, 350 miles away, but right. you can't listen across town. Got right. it. <laughs> right. So we should be listening to Uncle Tony in a couple of minutes. Uh, he'll give us a call. <laughs> and don't forget, sure. June, coming up now on June 12th, down in Desertland in Orlando. That's that new uh, phenomenal place that that the destination spot for all car guys they're having their model contest from 10 to 4 on the 12th uh, and it's it's going to be if you if you haven't i haven't been there but uh, mm-hmm. it is basically a shopping mall that's been repurposed as a car guy's paradise and you know i don't want to get into more of that because we do have a call but check out desiland and let's go to the funds and fun phones and fun to say hi you're on with the motor mouths What's happening, man? Here he is, Uncle Tony. How you doing, brother? Hey, Uncle uh, Tony. <laughs> what's going on, guys? You know, Tony, I got to tell you something. We uh, it, it's, it, we don't have you on enough. It was last September 19th that you were on. We got to keep you in a tighter rotation. But I know I know the orbit you run in is tough, man. You, you, you're you always busy. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Got you know, seven days and nights a week, but this is all part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. and we thank you for, uh, for for making some time for us on a Sunday. Uh, I'll tell you something. The, the impetus for this whole thing, for this call, is I watched a, a video of yours titled Inflation, Collapse, War and Famine, Time to Get on Your Bike and Ride. And let Yeah, me, isn't that awesome stuff? Well, let me tell you something, Tony. Really, and I mean this heartfelt. I told this to Chris. That video spoke to my soul. I mean, really? no, yeah, and a lot of stuff you've done has done that, but that hit me, and I had to go see the other videos you referenced in that one, and I said, oh, now I see why he, exactly how this came about. Um, and, and I'd like to talk about that with you a little bit, because it's, it's a topic sure. that a lot of our guys, uh, I think, will, it'll resonate with. Well, I think, it's, I think it's something that more and more people are starting to wake up to. Okay. You know, I mean, things, things have been, things have been, Dead for a long time, a really long time, and it's something that finally stuff is becoming so obvious, it's becoming so over the top, and so bad that the average person is starting to wake up and say, "Hey, wait a minute, things ain't right." Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, you're seeing that more and more and more. And uh, as we go forward, as car people, bike people, gearheads, right? These are realities we're going to have to deal with. Right. The realities we have to deal with right now. You know, dance right. hearts shortages of parts, fuel, so on and so forth. And, and you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, oh, well, go ahead. Let me, let, me hear your, let me hear your thoughts on all this. Well, you, you're right. And I, I, I'm with you on everything. We've all felt the part shortage. We've all felt, we've all had the cam and lift of failures. Um, oh. I, I was just dealing with a car. You know, I thought of you just the other day. I'm working on a Buick at the shop. It's, a, it's an eight-cylinder Buick with a points ignition. And the thing's running like crap. It had a muffler explosion. So I'm looking for burned exhaust valves and all sorts of... It ends up, I said, you know what? Let me just change the point and condenser in this thing. And right. I took a used set out of an old distributor and yep. got this thing... <laughs> it worked fine, right? The only thing that... Then, this is the only thing that got me uh, perplexed was I'm trying to set the dwell with my old Sun tack and dwell meter. A lot of people don't even know what that is anymore. Mm-hmm. And when I got anywhere over 24 degrees of dwell the car would run worse. This thing is running like a champ at 10 degrees of dwell. Holy smokes. Sure. And I've never seen that before, and I don't know why. But what I did is I said, you know what? I'm not going to force myself on this car. I'm, I'm going to let the car tell me what it wants. Right. And it wanted 10 degrees of dwell and a little bit of richness in the carburetor, and I drove it and it drove like a dream. So, so but I don't know That's why. And I'm just scratching my head, and I said, "Damn! If I was down to Tennessee, I, I, we could <laughs> we could spit all this." <laughs> well, dude, that's funny because my tech, my old Sun Tech, only w- will register at like 32 degrees of dwell, no matter what so, car I hook it up. That's because it's broken. <laughs> it so, so I know. It's so let me ask you a question. Yeah, it, it, you had ten. You had ten at idle, right? Yes. What happened? It, you, you gave it some gas. Yeah, this is at idle. Yeah. Then? Yeah, this is at idle speed, about six hundred RPM, right? Right, but now if you, let's let, let's say let's say you, you, you buzz the gas, did the, did, it, did it change at all? Uh, I don't remember looking at that. I know I was looking for, uh, like I said, as I increased the dwell, looking at the gauge. As soon as I hit twenty and above, twenty five and above, it started to run like a bag of turds. It was like running like crap. Idle was dropping. It was running you know, not smooth. Hmm. So I cranked it back oh. down. And there, you yeah, there were reasons for that, but off the top of my head, I can't think of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I didn't know either. So, so to, 
Uncle Tony, let me ask you, do you, do you think it's going to turn into like Havana, Cuba in the next uh, 10 years or so, where the whole town is going to be walking around with a bag of tools working on everyone's cars? you think it's going to get like that bad? Is that, is that what we're projecting it's here, different. just out of curiosity? It's, it's, it's different. It's different. Havana, Cuba is, is, is an example, right? But I, about 10 years ago, I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, Brian Loans, He's one of the uh, one of the announcers for NHRA. He, uh, he has a uh, website called Bankshift.com. Oh yeah, Bankshift. Okay. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So he he we did a thing. I guess it was about ten years ago, called uh, Post Apocalyptic Hotline. Mm. Because I've been I've been sitting around for the last twenty years waiting for this to happen. You know, mm. I made right. all my preps twenty years ago. I moved to Tennessee. I got into precious metals. I you know eliminated all debt. I've got an analog life. You know what I'm saying? So. It's like I'm already, I'm already like way ahead of the game with this. I, all analog except for YouTube. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like I, I make my living in the most technical way possible, but I, you know, my, my, my personal life is as simple as it could be. So uh, that's so great. We, we that's actually pretty cool. Post-apocalyptic hot runner. Uh huh. And see, here's 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 what I think is going to happen. Here's what I, here, here's here's the basic scenario. I think is going to happen. I think sometime before the end of this year, right. I think we're going to have a banking crisis. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have a, a currency crisis. It's 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 almost it's mathematically baked in the cake. Um, okay, so like a, re- a recession, the the value of the dollar is going to drop. We're, we're, I'm assuming we're going right. Um, well, okay, it, it, we're not, it's not a recession. If, okay. if you if you look at if you if you uh, see, there's the mainstream media, the mainstream financial press. They'll keep throwing around the word recession. Right. right. It's not a recession. It's a depression. And okay. it's not really even a depression. It's the end of a super cycle. Ooh. So it, as, so so you have to be you have to be familiar with Elliott waves and, and kind of these cycles. Um, the, the, this we're, we're, we're in we're at the end of a quantitative super cycle. And it started around 1995, 2000. Mm-hmm. This is the end of it. End of it. And at this point. If everything goes the way it looks like it's going to go, the dollar is is going to basically cease to exist in the form that we know it today. Oh, okay. Now, you talk about bubbles, and like we're in the everything bubble. Mm-hmm. So you got the real estate bubble, the market bubble, this, the debt bubble, that, all these bubbles, all these bubbles. And people use the word bubble, they, they don't really understand what, the term actually means when something is in a bubble it means that when the bubble pops it's as if it was never there okay, okay? now follow along the current everything bubble that we're in can trace its roots back to august 15th 1971 which is when nixon closed the gold window to international redemption and from mm-hmm. that point we've been a completely fiat currency we should have had a depression Sometime around 1979, 1980, Reagan went, was, was elected. What Reagan did at that point, we're facing a depression. We had crazy inflation. You guys are old enough to remember this. Oh, sure. 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 Crazy inflation. Uh, we had, we had a manufacturing route. It, it, was, it, was, it was terrible, okay? Right. We were on the verge of a depression. And what Reagan did was he handed over the economic policies of the country, basically the running of the country to Paul Volcker of the Fed. Mm-hmm. Volcker passed it on to Alan Greenspan. Right. And from, from, from 1980 on, we've had 1981, 1982 on, we've had a completely artificial economy. It's based mm-hmm. on nothing except, you know, <laughs> the, the promises. Mm-hmm. Of, so at any rate, when this bubble can trace its roots back to August 15th, 1971, and when this bubble pops, you're going to see all of the, cash, the basic cash values for things revert back to that level. So if, let's say, the house you're living in right now has a cash price of $500,000, but in 1971, the cash price on it was 35000 it's going back to that. Oh, Okay, that's not good so, for your real estate guys, Chris. <laughs> yeah, so so basically, what what I'm trying to get here is that at one time a dollar bill had a uh, it had a gold uh, an amount of gold uh, to back it up. That was no, to show the no. value of it. The, do- the dollar is defined 
right? Listen, the dollar is defined as one ounce of gold, or silver, rather. One ounce of okay. silver. That's the constitutional. Right. It's it's uh, 700 and something, 90, 796 grains of silver it is one ounce. Uh, and, and I could be off on that number, but it's one ounce of silver is a dollar. Right. The ratio was $20 to one ounce of gold. Okay. All right. So silver, our, our currency and our economy was based on silver. Mm-hmm. China's economy and currency has been based on silver for, for 12,000 years. South America, silver. Right. So, but commerce, international commerce and banking, silver is just too cumbersome. And so that's why you had gold. Okay. So at, at all of our international trade was, was, was convertible to gold. All of, the, all of the money that went out for, in, in terms of trade was convertible directly to gold up until August 15, 1971. Mm-hmm. Right. So, right. Am, am I am I getting way too far off? It, it's 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 deep. It's deep. And I tell you, you're talking about convertibles, and I want to say I want to bring something out of that video. And it was something you said that I agree with. Things that make us happy: internal combustion, banging gears, revving stuff to mm-hmm. valve float, popping a clutch, all good, right. cheap fun. So mm-hmm. that part of it, uh, I think, a lot of people, ourselves included will gain a lot by going back to the basics and like you've been doing by, by buying up these motorcycles and I swear to God if I don't know where you found that Suzuki but if I saw that thing I would grab it in a half a second that was I, a I, was just, I was just rolling around with it about an hour ago Oh, uh, you know there's something about those UJM4s that I love the feel of that's why I ended up buying a BMW 4 cylinder because it's just that that you know that 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 it's like yeah. an electric motor kind of power. It just comes and rolls on, and especially if you do like you know velocity stacks, jets, and a, and a Kirker pipe. Oh boy, you know. You know the the, pro- the the problem with that Suzuki, right? I bought. It, okay, so here's what happened, right? I was when I quit drag racing. When I got away from nitro, right? I was like, I got to get away from cars altogether. I, I don't want to have anything to do with cars. So I got rid of everything. I went cold turkey, and I just went strictly motorcycles. So for about five years, all I did was screw around with motorcycles. Bought and sold hundreds of other things. When I left my house in New York, when I left to move to Tennessee, I had 28 motorcycles in my house. Yeah. Right? And I had the, the gamut. At the time, I had a, a 900RR Honda. Uh, a, I had a, a TL1000. You know, I was into sport bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a we had a, a, a street race Suzuki like a Katana with a with a oh, with yeah. a, well anyway, anyway um, a Katana was and hot. I had a bunch of I had a bunch of classic stuff yeah okay um, and Sportsters I got a thing for Ironhead Sportsters mm-hmm. so when I left New York I got rid of everything except my Sportsters so I came to Tennessee with seven Ironhead Sportsters and mm-hmm. a two stroke Yamaha because I, I I needed that too okay and one by one I I got rid of them all. The third time I got hit by a guy making a left turn, mm. I says, "That's it, I'm done." Yeah, because I've had you know, it th- three times I got wow. hit. Wow! One time I shattered my tibia. It was it was a mess, right? Yeah. So I says, "You know, what? I'm done with this. I'm just I'm just done." So I got rid of the last one. Then about six in the last September, it was like the last time I talked to you guys. Uh-huh. I'm going to Facebook Marketplace, and a 2002. Yeah, Sportster eighty three R pops up. And that's a great now bike. This, yeah, well, well, it's a turn of a bike, is what it is. Well, it's, it's it, 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 what, what, there's something about that particular bike that talked to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the color, the stain. I have no idea the what way it, is, it looks. But that particular bike talked to me. No, because I remember when you when you got it and you debuted on a channel. I'm like that's a nice looking sporty. I'm looking at a ninety five right now. You know, a, a, an Evo sporty, and people are like, "Why? You're a big twin guy." I'm like, something about this bike just looks right. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, so I, I bought that bike, and then I says, "This is too nice to just to, to like you know because the bike's clean." Okay. Yeah. So I says, "This is too nice to like ride every day, rain, shine." Puddles of mud and everything else. There's something, something else up. So I bought this Buell Blast. Right. As it turns out, this Buell Blast is the most fun motorcycle I have ever owned in my life. Yeah, they used to use them up here for motorcycle training all the time. Yeah. 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 I always looked down on them. I was like, what the hell would you bother with something like that for? Well, right. my, <laughs> mine, mine has a Vance and Heinz pipe, carbs been jetted, a lot of the, you know, all, all of the, uh, the, 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 the trinkets have been taken off of it. So now it's just this clean, naked street fighter cafe racer type of thing that is literally the most fun I have ever had with an engine. 
Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, Chris, I don't I know if you it. got to see it, but Tony did have a quote on uh, one of the bikes he bought, which is kind of cool. It's a 93 Shadow, and he said, you know, this is the bike I bought for just when you want to be the most obnoxious dickhead in the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, man. It's the truth. We may get bounced off the same, but, I, but I mean, you're right. I mean, we all kind of go through that sometimes. It's <laughs> I yeah. love it. You know what I mean? You, you get you get invited someplace. You're going to go to a wedding or you know, or a funeral or something. You know, you, you don't want to just roll up there with just like you know a regular bike. You want you want apes and like you know, glow right. and dark green paint. Exactly. Right? So this is what Right, that's that green one I saw with the engine in pieces. You know, that's- Chris, but I tell you, Tony thought of it the way you would have, where he said, hey, you know what, even if this motor isn't worth it, which it wasn't, there's more than 200 bucks worth of chrome on the thing. I mean, yes. the whole front end, you just unbolt that and sell it for like a grand, you know? Yeah, and to make you money. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, but I want Very the bike. I want, I want the bike. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know, well, I know you got plans. I picked up. The, the whole retro cruiser thing is huge, and I was thinking about buying a retro cruiser just because. And I said, well, why do I want to buy a retro cruiser? I'll just get a retro bike. So I bought the 61 Sportster. Right. Which is a kick only. I mean, it's, 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 it's drum brakes. It, it's just brutally simple. They don't right? get more and, uh, simple than that. Yeah. <laughs> now. No, and then I bought a Honda Super Cup. Right, right. Are you guys familiar with these things? You know, uh, they've been in my orbit. I've never owned one. I've never ridden one, but, I, but I'm familiar with them. Super Cub. The Super Cub is the most... Okay, so the original Super Cub. Uh, so Chiro Honda built this thing in 1958, right, mm-hmm. for the Japanese market. Then they right. started bringing them over here in 1960 or 61. And you know the song Little Honda by the Beach Boys? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, this is the bike that they sung about. I thought they were singing about the dream. No, no, okay. it's, it's, it's actually the Super Cup. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've the seen these when I was a kid. Yeah, the red and white ones. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right, so right. it's been awesome. continuous production all over the world now since 1958 in all different forms. It was wow. in, in a 70, a 90, and now it's the 125. But it's the same, like the, like the same architecture, the same shapes, the same everything. So it's totally retro. Right. So it's the most sold it's 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 the most sold motor vehicle in all of history they've built over a hundred million of these things wow yeah yeah wow that's all crazy. over the world yeah that is but amazing i started bringing them back here to the states in uh 2019 mm-hmm. really and I, I had to buy one of those oh sure yeah that's something to have in a collection and it's a light bike right it's it's like a, a an inner city type of bike i would think you don't mm. want to put this thing on a road do you mm. No, no, no. no. It's a it, runaround. It, yeah. 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 It, it's it, 58 miles an hour on level ground. It slows down to around 45 on a typical, like, uphill run. Yeah. But for right. around town, I cannot tell you guys how many times. You know, YouTube is a stressful thing, guys. I mean, I, I got to tell you, if you've ever done it, you can't believe the stress that's involved in this yeah. stuff. So I, I'll, I'll come home at night, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Clock till eleven o'clock at night, all stressed out, and I'll jump on the super cub ah. and buzz around my neighborhood at twenty five miles an hour. There you go. And all of the stress <laughs> goes away. I know it's got to be kind of stressful because now I see you filming yourself a lot, so that's that's telling me something. <laughs> well, say, that, say that again. I said it must be stressful because I noticed that you're filming yourself a lot now, so that's kind of oh, telling yeah. me something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's cool. Well, that's, yeah. well, Kathy's busy running the rest of the business. Yeah, I know. You guys are growing, and that's great. I think that's fantastic. It's uh, it's really good. But you know what, Tony? We're going to take we have to take our bottom of the hour break, and I'm, when we come back, I uh, you know, want you to hang with us. I want to talk about another thing you mentioned about guys who have skills who can work with their hands, yeah. right? So, but first, we have to see if we have a little bit of business. Chris, do we have a bottom of the hour uh, motor mouth radio? thing that you do the uh of course we do <laughs> this is motormouth radio isn't it yeah well of course at the bottom of the hour we have the motormouth radio honor group of the hour and this week if you spent most of your free time getting your car or motorcycle looking good for the summer season but your tool bench looks like a cyclone hit it <laughs> 
Well, if the car looks fantastic, all shined up, ready to go, the bike looks awesome, the chrome is gleaming, but the tool bench is still cluttered with the previous winter projects, the broken lamp, the stuck paint lid, the car stereo pushed aside in pieces, box of carburetors, distributors, alternators, and water pumps just waiting to be rebuilt. And of course, as our Uncle Evunge will always say his favorite tool bench mishap. There's every toolbox drawer open with random hand tools spilling out. So if you spent the days cleaning up the car or the bike and you need even more time to shovel your way to the tool bench, then you are part of the Motormouth Radio Honor Group of the Hour. There you go. There you Excellent. Go. Tony, I'm well, sure you just described my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's absurd. Every week, Chris comes up with a golden nugget down there at the bottom of the hour, and it's it, and and there's always people who respond and say, "Hey, how did he know that was me?" Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, is this guy is, is following me around and, and looking at the background of everything? Right, right. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what else. We're all the we're all the same, Uncle Tony. We're all yeah. the same. The other thing that you don't want to you want to you want to remember is that to listen to the Unforgettables every Saturday night at nine on this station, where Michael Anthony presents two hours of jazz and standards with artist profiles and guests who make the music happen. So, we got to take just take a couple of spots here, Tony. Hang with us. We'll be back in a minute. Another yeah, sure. one, here's the second part of my personal homage to life right now. And uh, on Motormouth Radio, we'll be back with more of, uh, of Uncle Tony DeFeo from um, Uncle Tony's Garage with Ray Guarino, Chris Switzer on 90.3. WHPC, keep it where you got it. Hmm. Take this job and shove it I ain't working here no more My woman down left and took all of the reasons I was working for My name is Carl Anthony with Automoblog and AutoVision News and you're listening to Ray and Chris on Motormouth Radio, WHPC 90.3 FM. This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision with two locations in Limbrook and Oceanside who remind you that New York State law says you always have the right to choose which shop will fix your car. Car Star Celebrity Chase Collision offers a full range of services. 24-hour towing between Montauk and Manhattan, shuttle service, and they can help you with a rental car arrangement if needed. All repairs include the Car Star Lifetime Nationwide Warranty, ensuring that the experts at Celebrity Chase Collision are always on your side. Y si, sí, hablamos español. More information is available at 516-593-0920 or online at CelebrityChaseCollision.com. Hey you, get over here. Every Sunday, 12 to 1, you are going to tune in to hear the motor mouths, my friends Ray Guarino and Chris Switzer. 90.3 FM, WHPC. You might learn something. All right, we're back. Don't get in my way. And you know why. <laughs> I don't know. I got punched out of the music there. I didn't hear it. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Little David That's Allen good. Co. For, uh, for our enjoyment today. Ah. So, Tony, I want to talk about your, your thoughts about guys with skills. Uh, well, I mean, you have to go back to this whole thing, which is, Basically, it's going to be a reshuffling of the, of the economy, of civilization, of everything. We've reached the end of a cycle. Yeah. Uh, as, as we go into this new thing, the opportunities are going to be off the chain. But you say, okay, so, so here, think of it this way, guys. Think of it this way, right? Who, who's the most notoriously powerful secretive group in the world? Wow. The Masons. Well, right. they're pretty good. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good one. Did I, did I, I, I got that right. <laughs> yes. So now, right, where did the Masons get their start? How did they become so powerful? Uh, their craft? I would have said from the Illuminati, but... <laughs> well, pre-Illuminati, pre-Illuminati. Uh, how right? about the Knights Templar? Pre-all of that. Wow, pre-that? I mean, that's, the, that's going back pretty far. The Masons got their, gathered their power through the generations, through the centuries, because everything was made out of stone. Well, stone, yes. You needed yes, a stone, stone mason to do anything. Right. Yes, right. to build so a house. They had, they had more power than the governments. They had more power than the banks. They had more power than anybody. The, the Masons, mm -hmm. as a union, 
the civilization would not exist without the Masons. Right. And so that's how they gathered the power that they had. Okay. So now you go back, let's go back to this country. So, I mean, you, you, you can take examples all through, all through history, right? Now you go back to this country, right? And you look at the Industrial Revolution, and you look at the, 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 uh, the, the Automobile Revolution, right? And who were the most powerful and influential people in society? Who, who carried the most weight? It was the guy who kept everything running. It was the inventor. It was the builder. It was the, um, you, you go back, uh, yeah. right. Go back to the main, go back to the 1930s, right? American folk heroes were Indy car racers and stuff like that. You go back to the 1960s, American folk heroes were drag racers, right? <laughs> right. So engineers like W.O. Bentley and, uh, and, uh, people like that, that, that built cars, uh, Bugatti, um, mm-hmm. you talk about guys like those guys, right? Uh, uh, Hans Lewinka, who built the uh, what's that 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 um, uh, Czechoslovakian car? So we're talking about those type of individuals. Well, what about like a Ro- what about like a Roebling? You know, you want to talk about Bridges? Roebling, like yeah. Yeah, Henry Ford. Obviously, okay. I forgot. So, I so those in this country, those are the icons. Okay, but the the the, the average. The mechanic, the craftsman, the builder, the guy who keep, could keep, keep the machinery running had an extremely important part in society. Yes. Agreed. Right? I'm, you, I'm you with you on this. You rem- right? Yes. Now, now, from the 1970s on, from, 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 that, from that period, 1971 on, our role in society became less and less important as we became more and more a disposable society. Right, right. The right. disposable society is all based on debt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, as the debt dries away, it goes away, we still have the infrastructure of the world that needs to be maintained. Right. As, as, the, as, as the consumer economy disappears and a, a, a more uh, 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 grounded economy grows, out the people who can build things, make things, keep them running, maintain them, those are the ones who will once again become the most important staples of any community. Yeah, and Tony, you know, you, that's what you would mention, and I, I've told my wife this a long time. I said, listen, I said, the guys who can fix stuff, like, who do you call, you know, uh, Tim Allen said it on, on Home Improvement years ago. Yeah, oh, no, it was in a stand-up act where he said, you know, what are men for? Yeah, they're here for vehicle care and lawn maintenance. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's what we, It's true. That's what no, we, Tony, you home. definitely have a point, because what w- you, there are individuals, and in a, a lot of them, that push paper from one side of the desk to the other, and they're making a good living. What's going to happen to them? They're going to pretty much disappear, because they can't fix anything, right? Right. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a problem if you're one of those people. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> it's a problem. Like I said, I, I've where I told people this, I've worked in engineering all of my adult life and all the jobs I've had, mm-hmm. and I've always been on the technical side, uh, not the paper side, and I work with some of the most brilliant engineers there are, but if you give the guy a screwdriver, you put it through his hand. You know? <laughs> right. They always right. came to me like, okay, can you make this work? Yeah, I can make this work. You know? Yeah, and, and I've been the same way, Tony. I've fixed everything I've had. I Literally, I've had a, a, almost a 60-year career of fixing things and, and with, with questionable amounts of success. But it's still, it's still enough to, to uh, save a ton of cash in my home uh, revitalization business where I could fix my washing machine and my dryer and my dishwasher wow. and my refrigerator and my stove well, I tell you, all Chris, in the same house. The, the thing that I really like that Tony does, though, is something that, that I know I try to do. Impart it on the younger generations. Yes. Get more guys yeah. and girls doing this stuff. You know, when you Agreed. had Uncle Crystal welding, I was like, yes, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She'll be so, back. She'll be back. I don't know if she's stuck with it, but you know what? I have a couple daughters, and, uh, and they said, yeah, you know, they, they actually want to play around with stuff like that. I'm like, okay, you know, we'll get you out there. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll burn something up. No problem. Yeah. No, but I'm with you 100% on this, Tony. This is, this is definitely moving me. You're right. You're right. The, the, the repair person will rise. Absolutely. Absolutely. The person. Well, who rules Bartertown? Okay. So, so I mean, if, if let's just, I mean, I'm not saying we're going to a bottle economy, right? But just, just to use that as an example, if, if you don't have a skill, you have to offer up a good. Right. 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 In exchange for another good. But if you mm-hmm. have the skill, you have to offer up nothing but your skill or your knowledge in order to maintain the good. So now who has the upper hand? Right. Exactly. You know, I had a very good friend of mine that one time said to me, if I need something fixed in my house, I'll just work overtime. And I said, well, what happens okay. if the overtime isn't available and that thing breaks anyway? 
well, then who's going to fix it? That's the thing. When things are stable, that 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 mindset works because yeah, you can just work and make more money and pay somebody. Um, and but you see, here's the thing, right? You just said it, right? When things are stable, right, right, right? exactly. But they, but but here's the thing, okay? Here's here's what you got to really wrap your head around this, right? The, so you're, we're all about the same age. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm sixty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. All right. We never knew a normal world. We never knew a stable world. Right. Everything yeah. that we've known, or all of, like like through our entire lives, has been an aberration. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 It, now, now comes the time to clear that out and return to basics, return to normalcy. I, I let me throw something out to you. I, I was talking with my wife, my younger daughter, who's twenty five. We were having dinner the other night, and I said, you know. I said, one of these things that that recurs and comes back to me, and I was watching a YouTube video about it, and I said, what if this is all like somebody's diorama and we're just like the the pieces? What if they and they, what if they reset it? Like you go back to the Knights Templar and, and, and all the, and they said, you know what, this didn't work, let's get rid of that. Okay, now we have Romans and then oh that well that worked. They fed everybody to the lions, get rid of that. And then you got Christianity and then you you just go up through the through the through history and maybe they're just resetting the playing field and we're just in this current iteration. And well, the, the the term there's there's two terms that are that are going around, right? And I, I I'm gonna tell you right now, okay? I'm I'm twenty something years into this, okay? Mm-hmm. So I've been watching and waiting and 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 just just you know biding my time. But there are two. <sighs> see, I don't want to get too far into conspiracy stuff or anything. Well, will we consider conspiracy stuff? But as you see, things that were conspiracy are becoming their daily fact now. Yeah. There are two. There are two terms that anybody who's really interested needs to become acquainted with, and one of them is the Great Reset, uh-huh. mm-hmm. which which is a mathematical certainty. It, it's it's not a it's not it's not, an, it's not a conspiracy. You have two sides on this. One side wants to push us all into a central bank digital currency, and the other side wants to return to sound money. Which one is going to win? I hope it's the sound money people. Yes, mm-hmm. the digital it's money people were all screwed. Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're but right. Either, either way, it's a certainty. And then mm-hmm. the other the other phrase people might want to become acquainted with is the Great Awakening, okay, which is something that's happening really in big numbers now and has over the last let's just say two years without getting into anything political. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's uh, that's that's good food for thought, and uh, and you know people. I hope they wrote that down, and they should they should listen to that. But now, uh, more importantly, I'm watching the clock. We're getting we're getting close on time. What's yeah, I, I know you kind of wing it. You do stuff like if you kind of work like we do sometimes. You'll pick something up and say, okay, let's talk about this. Yo, know, here's your new video. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've been doing it for 20 years I know that way. I know we really can't ask you what's next out of Uncle Tony's garage, but do you, do you have I mean, and I was explaining to Chris how you, how you work with your projects, how you'll, you know, you get into them, you build them, and then you hand them off to people, which is fantastic. I, I like that. I love too. that. I love it. That's I, fantastic. I charge, well, I, my happy place is in the shop. I've, I've done as much drag yeah. racing as I ever cared to do. I've done as much street racing as I ever care to do. I've done as much travel as I ever care to do. So now I want to just st- stay in my shop, build stuff, and hand it to other people and say, "Here, man, go make smoke." Yeah, I, I kind of like back it. when it's broken. Let's fix it. That, that's that's <laughs> my happy place too. I was out there yesterday. Just just get, you know you know. And, and I always said the best time to go out, you know, like if you have a home garage, like like you do, like well, yours is attached, mine isn't. I said the best day time to go out there is in a snowstorm or in a deluge rainstorm because no one in the house is ever going to come out and try and get you or bother you you're safe out there until the weather breaks but yeah tony what a fantastic attitude to have if you really think about that that just is just sharing your knowledge and yeah. your technique and and having someone else you know mess it up and bring it back and and fix it and and you you're i'm sure it's a massive learning project too it's just to me it's i'm thinking about this as we're talking about it i'm going there's nothing that's bad about this it's all yeah. good and not only what that a, I, and now he shares are on youtube for everybody to see yeah i tell everybody who gets involved with me with any of this stuff right if you don't break this, I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If this comes back, if this comes back, if you could drive it back into the shop, I'm going to be mad. There you go. <laughs> See, that's funny because I just learned a term recently called mechanical sensitivity. Oh, and and that's what I am. I try and use it to the point where it doesn't break. Like I try and get it to that point, wherever it is, where it's not going to snap in half. And I'll try and just yes, keep I'm, reaching that point. That's that's where. So you have absolutely no mechanical sensitivity at all <laughs> well no but i but I, I do i do with like like my own personal machinery mm-hmm. right. you know what i'm saying 
But the uh-huh. stuff that you send out into the world, the whole, the whole idea of, of hot rodding is to, is, to, is to go out there and push it to the max, push it to where it breaks, then fix what broke and try to go to the next step. You know, improve, improve as you go along. Got so the it. breaking yeah. of things is just part of that process. Right, part right. of the engineering process, the re- research and development. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, and it gives me something to look forward to. You know, it gives me something to do. Tony, totally you, you, you are wise beyond your years. Wise beyond your years. I love it. I love it. I've, called, I've been called a lot worse than that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's, uh, <laughs> but hey, it's cool. No, I just love that. I love the fact that what you work on, the projects, like the, the Miata with the Slant 6 in mm-hmm. it. I mean, I was just completely blown away by so like, where, where did anybody, who came up with, what concept, what great goose moment was that? <laughs> I had a Miata. I looked at this. I, just, I saw these LS slops and big block slops and all this other stuff. And I was like, wait a minute now, right? I just, I just, I, you know, the Slate 6 is it's one of them orphan motors. It's like, well, what the hell do you do with the damn thing? But then I, I said to myself, well, a 170, the small version, is a notoriously high revving motor, right? And right. it's relatively light. I just right. it, and if, if I stick this in the slant, in the, in the, in the Miata, the whole thing will be behind the front axle center line, you know, and, right. and it was like it was a, like actually a mid engine car. Yeah, it was almost in the front <laughs> seat. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> you got the, the last plug. You're staring at it. It's right where the radio is. Right. <laughs> well, no. the, the doghouse I built for that car literally came to, to exactly the end of the original dashboard. Yeah. So like when you're wow. sitting in the car, you really didn't notice that you had that big of a doghouse in it. Mm hmm. Wow. But the motor was it, the, the entirety of the motor is behind the, the front axle center line. Right. Well, well actually, I had a better weight distribution than a stock Miata. I, I will tell you something, Tony. For, through the years, I've always been a GM guy. I've been a fringe Mopar guy. I've had a few through my my career, but you know, lately I've been finding myself wanting to buy a Slant Six. I don't know why. <laughs> I do. Right? Yeah. Okay, it's a sickness, and I don't know sickness. why. I'm like, because if anything, I'd be like a 440 or a 383 guy, but. You know, I, I don't know, I think because I kind of like the quirky stuff, too. So, you know, got my eyes out for you know a Valiant. All, all of those inline sixes, all of the old analog carbureted inline sixes from, from the 70s on back are just magic. Yeah. There's just something about them. They're just so simple and agricultural and friendly. And I, I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to put my, it, they're so easy to work on. You know, it, it's like, it, they're, they're magic. Once you get sucked into that, I mean, I've done, I've done, the, I've done the blown nitro thing, man. Yeah. I did top fuel. I, right. you know, I went, I went there. Sure. And it's like, yeah. okay, done with that. Now let's go back to happy stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, let's go back to stuff that doesn't try to kill you when you actually try to start it. The right? last slant <laughs> six I had, the last slant six I had intimate, uh, uh, an intimate life with was the car I took driver Ed in in 1974. It was like a loaded. Uh, 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 what the hell was it? No, it wasn't even a value. But yeah, yeah, I can still hear it. You can hear the sound. You can hear that one barrel sucking. It's, you, you can never oh, yeah. forget the sound of those things. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I had a girlfriend it, that had that had a Valiant, and she ran it continuously on a quart of oil. It literally, the oil was you pulled the the oil stick, and it would be like this little little tip at the edge of it every time I would check the oil on the car. Oh, and she's like, "Yeah, it runs fine. Who cares?" So I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a prediction, and it has to do with slants and 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 inline Chevys and Fords and all these AMC is all of them, right? All of these old things. I'm going to make a prediction over the next three years or so. You see how how we've had we've had uh, you know muscle cars went berserk, right? Gotcha. Everything with muscle car went berserk. Yeah. Okay, the common family car, the common family car is going to be the next thing to go absolutely nuts. It kind of think I. Yeah. Why? Why? I honestly believe it's going it, to it's going to eclipse the muscle car thing. Well, it kind of is because wagons are ready. You can't get near a wagon. Four doors have already. I mean, you have you have the uh, the corner of that market, but even around here, four doors are are popular now. Guys are scoping out because you well, can't they, find they, the twos anymore. Yeah, you can't find the twos anymore. Yeah. So you have to go with the more doors. But Tony, what is, what is your what is your uh, genesis for this thought? What's your theory? What is it? Just like oh, just the uh, tingle, the spidey the sense? What is it? Over the last 15 years, they've stuffed everything they possibly can electronically into these cars. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Now, yeah. in the old days, you guys remember, 
you go into a all parts store and they had literally you, you got a mom and pop store and literally every single part you could use to keep the average car on the road was right there. You need a water pump for for your Chevelle, it's right there. You need yeah. front end parts for your Mustang, it's right there. You know you need a transmission the overall kit for your for your torque flight, it's it's there on the shelf. Okay? Yep. Right. You have literally everything went in okay, now now it takes warehouses. Mm-hmm. Right, and instead of instead of having just a handful of disposable parts on the car, right now there are right. thousands of disposable parts on a car. Mm-hmm. So what's sure. going to happen is, as we go forward, you've got a ten year old car, twelve year old car, fifteen. It won't be supported anymore. Right. So the electronics. So literally everything you buy becomes a Dixie cup. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now these older oh, yeah. these older analog cars, right? You could fix the headlight switch. Stops working, and you can take it apart. Yeah, fix the contacts. I did that. The springs went everywhere. <laughs> mm. Yeah, right. Tell me. <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. You have touched on a theory that I've been talking about, and Ray has laughed at me for for a while now. And I call them carb people. And what they are are the, these individuals that have no technology in their vehicles. They have a, a mm-hmm. Chevelle 300 with a with a straight six and a one barrel carb and an AM radio. And that's it. It gets them from here to there. And they don't have to worry about any electronics whatsoever. And these people are going to like take over because the electronic cars are going to turn to dust, like you say. Mm. It's, it's exactly just the epoxy. Right. So I totally am with you on this. I am really with you on this. The carb people will, a carbureted vehicle is going to be the new valuable car because it's not attached to technology in any sort of way. I know it's a similar scenario, but we're on the same wavelength here. I'm with you. Wealthy wealthy people, wealthy people want things of lasting value. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Wealthy people are going to start seeking out when 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 their McLaren can't stay two weeks out of the shop, and and now it's completely done because the 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 the, the module that controls the whatever the hell it is is no longer supported. Right. Now you've you've got a three hundred thousand dollar ashtray right there, but in the meantime, that three hundred Chevelle with the straight six, yeah, that's something you could wax and you can love and you can drive down the road and your mechanic can fix it. And it's happy and simple and everything else. And those are the cars that are going to become the most valuable. It, and I mean in a very short period of time. You know, Over the next three to five years, you're going to see an explosion in those cars. Tony, people have asked us on this show a lot about trends. And, you know, we're not, we're not Kreskin. But they've asked, like, what's going to be the next collectible? And, then what, you know, and I said, hey, you know what? I got, a, I got a prediction. I made this prediction probably about eight years ago. So when the cars from the 90s, cycle, late, late 80s and 90s cycle around and people want to maybe restore them, they're not going to be able to do it because they're not going to nope. be able to find the modules, the computers, all the electrical stuff. Right. And that still is the case today. I mean, you can get an ECM because... You know that there are places to do that, but you're not going to get the the CAN bus stuff and the door modules, and you know not even like that stupid CDI thing for your, for your Suzuki. I mean, you you had to find a used one. I'm sure you didn't find a, a new one. I bought a new one. I bought I bought a, I bought a digital replacement. Oh, so right? had, okay, I'm, had I'm ready. To, okay, yeah, I'm ready to throw points in it. <clears throat> right, right, right. You, you know what I mean? But I figured, well, the bike's all original. Let me just keep it original. Yeah, and I, and yeah. I bought I bought it was only like two hundred bucks. So crazy. I says, you know, the, the CDI unit. So I says, let me just throw this thing in there. And then if I got future problems, the hell with it. I, 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 because it's an old engine. It originally started out with points. So it's just a matter of changing the breaker plate. I have never seen, even back in the day when I was running Japanese street bikes in the late 70s, I have never seen in modern times a, a, a Japanese bike that clean. That thing is just like oh. museum quality. So that, yeah. That's what I was going to say before. I, I bought this bike because... It looked grungy, and I was like, great, there's my shit weather, excuse my French, I didn't mean to say it. There's my bad weather motorcycle, right? And I brought it home, mm. and I cleaned it up, and it doesn't have a speck of rust on it. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, a good-looking bike. All right, Tony, we're at the end of the show. Can you give people your contact information, how they can find you, get a hold of you, and watch what you do? Uncle Tony's Garage at, at, on, uh, on, on YouTube. Right, that's the best. I think we will have a link up on our site. Tony, we're going to run, but we thank you for coming on with us as always, brother, and we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch. And now we found out how to get in touch with you. we got to go through Uncle Kathy. So. you got to go through Kathy. Yeah, I don't answer. I don't, even, I don't even look at my phone. I just, I just you know, this <laughs> is one of those things. Well, we thank yeah. you. Thank you for that, Tony. We'll be in touch, and we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep watching you on YouTube and, and enjoy your, your content. Thank you. Uncle Tony, a great Thanks, show. Guys. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All Have right, a great t- one, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Be safe. <laughs> All right, Chris, with that, we are at the end of this show. So what do we always say that John can't say today because he's laid up? What are you going to say? <laughs> 
don't follow us home unless you're driving a slant six with a four barrel carb and a hyper pack. With a ham sandwich <laughs> in the back. You got it. All right. For Chris Switzer, Ray Guarino, Uncle Tony, we'll be back next week. See you with more Motor Mouth Radio. WHPC 90.3. See ya. See ya, bye.